All right, folks, we have a new drama in TFT. We have more competitive rulings and bans. So let's go ahead and start off from the very beginning, which is that about a week ago, Beppo Carrot, you might know him as a big time one trick on ladder that uh, likes to run up thousands of LP up and down in any given week. You might go like 1100 LP up and then down to the master zero LP in the same week. Uh, he has been kind of taken upon himself to be like tweeting out breaking news and stuff like that, a little bit like investigative journalism. He tweeted out that Shunga, the set seven world champion, this is the dragon set. He was talking about how he was counter sharing with another NA player named Zeal Ming Cat. And this is important because Zeal Ming Cat is also, if you look at the qualifier points for people who get to regionals, Zeal Cat was actually one of the highest ranked people uh, going into uh, the event before. Okay, so this is a... But Zeal Cat was actually a player that was on this list that was eligible to, like, make it through snapshots and, make and like, qualify for events. And Shunga is sharing an account with him and streaming on it, right? So there's, like, there's a couple of layers. There's one is, like, everyone uh, who's account sharing usually isn't, like very public about it, let alone having someone as prominent as a world champion stream on the account. According to Tanner, he said that the CN servers were not be patched. And this is well known that CN gets to patch later than other servers. And so he borrowed random accounts to practice on the new patch. And he borrowed Zeoman Cat, who is an NA challenger player, to try to get experience because guess what? NA is a, a really good server to play against. The, the, the argument uh, for this is that this is against TOS. So punishment should actually be initiated because this is like competitive integrity. If ladder is a qualification method for some people to get to tournaments like Tactician's Trials and Tactician's Cups or qualify for regionals, then this messes with in competitive integrity. Even if Shunga plays six games and bot fours in a row, is that okay? Probably not. Uh, and so, you know, basically Beppo is highlighting this. Tanner um, replies to this and basically said uh that it's something that's culturally within china that happens so often and it's it's like something that you would have to like punish a lot of people and we didn't really think that anything was going to happen with it we kind of thought like ryan was just going to throw their hands up and just say okay oh well like guess what the guys win trading in the past or sorry uh account sharing in the past there was win trading accusation against china riot didn't take a hard enough stance for it and you guys may have seen like the previous drama where like Setsuko got banned, and then Setsuko tweets like, ha ha, XDD, I got banned for an entire set for like, you know, talking shit while China literally win trades. And, you know, they basically get like a little bit of a fine and like nothing happens. Lo and behold, yesterday, China Riot or whoever operates China, maybe it's Tencent or something. It's not exactly like Riot Games themselves, but they decided to actually ban Shunga and he can't play in China regionals. He arrived at the event and then he finished filming everything and then practiced. And then he got told like two days. China Regional starts in like a day or two. He got told that he can't play and has to go home because he played these ranks on these challenger accounts. Uh, and then Tanner goes through the whole thread, right? He basically says like, in my country, it's, you know, this happens in every game. League, Val, TFT, Overwatch, CSGO. The stream market is actually occupied by a bunch of people that boost and publicize it. And actually there's an entire industry where like, uh, you, you can like sign up for like an app. Like you can sign up for like an app and you like lend your account to somebody and then someone on the other client side borrows your account and you don't even like interact with it. It's entirely possible that Zeoming Cat never even talked to Shunga like about it because he like lends his credentials in and stuff like that. So it's like a, it's like, it's like a, it's like a account sharing service. Like there's an entire industry in China. Apparently I, I didn't know how in depth it was, but that's apparently what it is. And Tanner says, I'm not trying to like excuse anyone, but like, this is just like part of the culture and like something that they don't think is a big deal. They don't think it's a big deal. As a random aside, there's a lot of people that say like, well, of course that's a big deal. Like are China is, is cheating. Okay. In Chinese culture or like, oh, there's a lot of people that kind of turn this into like a culture war. But I want to remind you guys that there's also a, like, I, I don't agree. I actually do think this is against competitive integrity. I think that punishment should be enacted against something like this. But uh, I want to just throw out a counter example. In Korea, typing in chat to, talk, to like negotiate and call your comps is considered against the rules. So if you like type me like, hey, don't hold my Calissas and I won't hold your Raj or whatever like that, they, they consider that straight up cheating. But in North America and the West, they actually think that's like part of the game. They think like diplomacy is like part of TFT. So I, 
the reason why I'm just bringing that up is to show you that there are a lot of debates about whether or not things are okay and not in TFT versus others. Now, I know that the argument is going to be, the counterpoint is going to be like, are we seriously equating typing in chat to win trading or, or, or boosting? Um, that, that's, that's, that's something else different because there's actually another part of boosting that I want to talk about. So we'll, we'll get there in a sec. Anyways, Tanner goes to this thread and he basically says like a huge thing about the rule book. In American region, the starting set, Riot published a general rule book that works for all TFT esports participants in the region. A different region that didn't rule book to use in CN region. Tencent didn't publish a general rule book for competitive players to follow a set and didn't inform players to read any kind of global rule book. In the events that CN participated, all the rule books were based on specific tournaments. For example, TOC9 Magic League rule book, which is actually in Chinese. I can't actually access it. You need like a password in order to like get into it. Like you translate this, right? I have to log in with permissions. I can't actually do it. Besides, we've never been told or asked to learn to read the rule book of any other regions. I personally, as a global influencer, know all rules, but many Chinese players do not even know that Riot operated 20 tournament spots come from in-game rank ladder. So I would say Shunga did violate the US. Action taken based on TOS makes sense. I personally don't agree to use the terms of American rule books, though, on a player who is from another region rather than America's. And his action is taken has to be consistent to everyone. Lastly, it's just the right to stop using ladder as a way to qualify players into tournaments. That was the part that I, li I liked. I actually kind of think that we're, we're too dependent on this. The rank system was not designed to support it. We don't even know if they've forced IP detective on all TFT competitive players, but they definitely have not, although they do have Vanguard. I believe there's boosted accounts on ladder and they've got into cups or trials. This part is very much true. There's people who have boosted whether or not directly through account sharing or through what is considered to be soft boosting, right? You can actually argue that is the fact i'm gonna go ahead and pull up ladder here a lot of ladder at the very top let's just take north america for example this happens in every region and again this is not pointing at any individuals but is the fact that these people who are in the same practice groups together one three uh ten fourteen right soju milk toronto tokyo mil um uh goo bums 24 they're all sitting on a call talking about TFT and playing, is that considered boosting for people who want to actually get to like snapshots, right? There's a little bit of this dynamic of is sitting on a Discord call with your homies and just jamming games, but some of them are like really high rank. They have the patch read. Is that considered boosting? There's like a lot of different like problems around it. That's gray area that you can't enforce. I'm, I'm not here to say that these people are problematic. I'm here to say that if they want to actually be consistent to everyone and they're they're like they're they're banning on the on the account of boosting which is what is part of the problem like account sharing is against tos but maybe it's like competitive integrity for boosting this opens up a giant can of worms in tft a giant can of worms what what like because then people are like well you know what if you're climbing and streaming on and then you're looking at chat and chat's helping you which i mean we, that's a different discussion entirely but you know in tft we're actually the only game where like streamers are allowed to look at chat and like talk to their chat about their games in some ways uh during a tournament there's a lot of competitive integrity issues happening in tft like across the board there's a lot uh and so i do agree that in general ladder is not perfect and well designed to support it i personally believe that things like super server is much better for ladder as a way to qualify but i know that we can't actually implement that for north america or just other regions besides china but in general, I think that ladder has had a lot of problems because there's also other things that have been talked about. For example, part of the reason why people count share is because ladder snapshots is very OP. If you get a ladder snapshot, you can qualify directly for the world championship uh, by just getting a lot of, or sorry, directly for the regional finals. Like Milk, Bruce, Phillips, Spencer, Dish Soap, they all are incentivized to sit and not play. And so what ends up happening is they don't play TFT. They all just share accounts like this is a smurf account yolo na2 uh nikhil has multiple accounts right there's 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 people who stream right there's people who stream on their alt accounts to try and climb and get practice in because they don't want to actually play anything but then you have situations where you have like wage and iverson uh tweeting about about spencer griefing somebody because spencer was just you know being an idiot and just for funding on ladder and then it doesn't matter what he does but he's but, but that, that, that's what creates some of these dynamics around tampering with competitive integrity. So that is all that happened yesterday. And then this morning, nuke number one dropped. Update of the drama. Shunga just reported Hong Lian, his destined enemy for playing on his girlfriend's account and another competitive player's account. This was seven hours ago at 5 a.m. What ends up happening is, what ended up happening is Shunga's fans ended up trying to retaliate and now shunga is going scorched earth and is reporting other cn streamers if you guys don't know honglian is the most popular competitive player uh he's not exactly at the popular popularity level of k3 soju but many people joke that he is the k3 soju of china 
So Shunga is now reporting other streamers. Honglin's won regionals, right? He's he's a he's a he's a well-known competitor, but now he's actually reporting other people. And this is what kind of brought me to today. Tanner actually just tweeted this. This was dropped like this was dropped like an hour ago. This is fresh off the press. Shunga's thoughts upon his ban. No one, no warning in advance, and directly got informed about being banned, a top and severe punishment. I agree with this. My biggest problem in general was that it felt like they hadn't enforced these rules. You could say Riot has always made account sharing against the rules. You could always say, like, it's always been illegal. So, like, you know, you playing with fire, you're going to get burned. But the reality was it was done so commonly that it felt like at least you could do some kind of courtesy. Be like, hey, we were lax on this in the past, but we're going to start cleaning it up because we see some competitive integrity. And then, and then like... Like, Shunga is not so stupid that he would jeopardize his entire career or, like, jeopardize his, his, his tournament appearances for working for regionals off of playing six games of solo queue on ladder. It's just, it sounds so ridiculous of a punishment to ban him from regionals for, like, just playing because the B patch isn't out yet because he's bored and he's on stream. It feels like, it feels like the no warning was, like, very, very key to this type of, uh, of why this drama is blowing up. Two, he's accepted punishment of account sharing. But he claimed innocent from the latter snapshot stuff. So he, he didn't even know how any system works. That's fair. Because I a lot of people don't know how other regions uh, system works. That is believable. Three, after comparison, the format and the tournament execution between America and CN, he considers the following things are ridiculous. 3.1. Oh my God. We're at sub points. 3.1. Top ladder equals top tournament or equals tournament spots. There will be dark alley dealings, aka win trading, match fixing, and more. <laughs> there will be dark alley dealings. That's an augment name for anybody who uh, maybe maybe don't play TFT in English. Uh, AK win trading match fixing anymore. I mean, we already had that, right? We had that with Careless D. We had that with Careless D. Where, where's uh, where's my profile? Where like there was uh, accusations of win trading because this guy FF in the middle of tournaments for snapshots, right? A against precedent. So that definitely does happen. Two, no camera requirements for cups and trials in America. Oh. Well, when the chickens come home to roost, uh, I've been asking and saying, like, why are we have no camera requirements? It's just like, yeah, like that is definitely a part of competitive integrity issue. Allowing players to type XXS comp in chat, which shouldn't be allowed. That, like I said, actually, I didn't even know this was this something they typed because this was dropped literally as I was doing the patch notes right before this video. But uh, yeah, like typing XXX comp in chat shouldn't be allowed. If this is the case, like, right, like, like the re replays of the world also uh, are in violation of these kinds of rules in other regions, but that don't allow it. He said some players had Blitz GG or other third parties enabled, but not punished. Also true. Should you allow Meta TFT, Mobilytics, or, uh, or Blitz or other, other third party apps that, that literally gives you, like, like this stuff literally gives you in game data and augments. In fact, you can even go, if you look at in-game, you can actually look at people's match histories and stuff like that. Okay, this is, we play on tournament realm server, but like, it's a huge competitive advantage. Like, if I don't know where to put my Jax, I just load up this build. Oh shit, Jax goes front center. Okay. Okay. Now I know there's going to be a lot of top players, right? The, the, the dish those of the world say it's not that big of a deal because you should know that as a top player. It's not an edge for me. But like that's not the point, right? It's not. It, that's not the point. He's saying that there's a lot of things that tamper with competitive integrity. Oh, allowing players to look up guides and stats. I mean, I, I'm a big believer in this. I, I actually wish that just you just aren't allowed to look at guides and stats. There are people who literally. I have testimonials in my TFT Academy Discord server. I'm not even joking you. Of people who literally look up TFT guides and say like because of your guide in tournament that I looked up, I qualified to the next day. There's people who literally look up TFT Academy guides in the middle of tournament to learn a comp and actually use it to learn how to play on the fly to advance to the next day. I mean, that that is also camp tampering with competitive decks. So he, these sub points are not wrong, which is why it goes back to the core point of if Riot wants to be the enforcer, if they want to be like, hey, we're going to punish people, there's like... I mean, this is not this is not even all of it, right? I, I covered smurfing. I covered like playing in Discord calls. There's like there's like a, probably a dozen other things that are violating competitive integrity. That it's already it's already kind of a clown show. Let's just put it out there. TFT competitive. There's an underbelly of it. It's already kind of a clown show. Shunga said the good news is the title double champion is no longer alone. Now we're adding a new title double band king. I guess at least he has a, a sense of humor about it. At least he has a, a sense of humor about it. Okay, this is live react here. Gobo Steer, top French player. Does CM player 
just like super server he said he doesn't like ladder spot i completely agree with all shungus thoughts a rank one can boost someone to tactician trial day one because of no camera and there's no way right now to prove someone is really playing very true tanner replies none of four main main region system is perfect people are more familiar with the west i will try to make a long video explain how cn qualifying system works super server is very exhausting it's based on ladder all potential win training can happen in the dark that's true it's not perfect either what happened when he was banned the first time oh apparently this is the second time he's been banned right there was a bounty mode on set 5.5 super server, but separated from the super server ladder. You can choose one of the five lucky divisions to compete and win money. Each day, the top listed XX of the division got prize money. Some divisions can be tough because it offers more money for top one of three. Some divisions are easier, but it offers less money. Okay. So you pick one and try to win money. The rules of getting points count five continuous games in a row summed up and gives you the most points. Let's so say you play 12 games in a day. Results goes by this. The system will count top five best games result, which is one, one, two, one. Okay. So it takes your best five games. Shunga abused the lead client rank system by inting 8888 and then got lower uh, lobby MMR so we can place higher and go 1111. They got banned for that. I mean, that's just smart. I mean, this guy, this guy's a gamer. I mean, that's, that's just min maxing. Casper Wu, known voice of reason. I am on Shunga's side. He's literally just playing an NA so he can just play the new patch in a competitive environment while waiting for B patch and C. And there should be a warning in advance since it never happened before. I hope players, their petition to ride games are unbanned. I actually agree with this. Uh, actually, this is a good summary. Oh, you know what? Actually, known voice of reason, Casper Wu. But that's not all. You might think that's it. This morning, a new Twitter account has been made called at TFT Report Center. Not followed by anyone I'm following. One follower doesn't have any verified followers. They started tweeting incidents of people account sharing with screenshots. They brought the receipts. They brought the receipt. They're naming... They're shaming. They're posting the links of the VODs. Like, they, it's not just screenshots. It's the VODs. V.doyu.com slash so slash LDB. Like, they, they got everything, man. They got everything. Flancy. Flancy. Second at Worlds in set eight or set nine. Uh, One of the top players from, NA, from CN. They, they call another Smurf. NA account New Jeans Minji. He played Global Scrim on this NA account when the account was played by someone. Anyway, Flancy was playing in a streaming scene ranked. Has two different people playing on it. Ning Li for boosting. He qualified for regionals. He's boosting on a few servers. He posted a screenshot with WeChat. <laughs> oh my God. They're just blowing the top off. Ace boosting on a few servers. Uh, Ace is a known player. Here we go. And Ice. People who have made it to Worlds. Ice made it to multiple times. End of last set. Shared accounts with each other. Played one uh, account in rank mode on stream. Here we go. Invited chat audience to play on this challenge main account through remote control application. Okay, I mean, that's just, that's just good content, man. I, <laughs> I mean, I, I guess this now starts to enter the territory, like, is, is chat. Okay, I mean, that's, that, that, I mean, that's just good content, man. I, 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 he's, he's okay with me for that one. Hashtag TFT rules. If enforced, should apply to all global competitors and normal users under Riot Games brand. Should I follow this? I might be the guy's first follower. Yeah, you know what? I'm following. You know what the best part is? Following Riot Games support, Riot Games, TFT, and Beppo Carrot. <laughs> this guy's following Beppo Carrot. <laughs> it all comes back full circle. It all comes back full circle. Oh my god. Oh my. All I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say one thing. Beppo better watch his back at Macau. <laughs> hey, this guy better watch his back at Macau, at Macau, man. Oh my gosh. Uh, I mean, he'll probably be fine, like physically, because he qualified for Macau. It's just that, like, dude, if if they're seeing players that see his username, they might be holding his units or two. All I'm saying, this guy is is, is playing powder or something. Maybe he holds his powders. Nine minutes ago, wow, we're just like this is just fresh out of the oven. You guys are feasting. We're eating, leaving no crumbs. After recent competitive rulings of Carelessly and Shunga, ex a formerly Twitter account accuses further people of account sharing all these different people. Many of these players are well known, few even participating in TOC 9 regionals. Riot can only enforce TOS when it's known about violations, but ratting out every individual the way to go? Tanner, TFT Ants, or JD Gaming Caster mentioned that account sharing is viewed differently in CN and even encouraged through different apps. Should Riot create a more strict competitive environment or remove Liar to be relevant for tournament qualifications? My God, the way this is framed is like a, like a debate. Like this. This, this is like a presidential debate question. Nobody's responded. Be the first to comment. Where's the, you know, you know, the GIF image? Is it of Kenny Powers, like throwing out the, the thing? Kenny Powers chair GIF. Is that, is, is, we're like, is it, is it, is it that one? I don't remember, but like, he basically like brought, brings out like the chair and the popcorn and like sits down. 
All right, so you guys are all caught up. We're going to find out what Riot does next, but that is basically the drama summarized in, in a nutshell. Good luck, Riot Games. I do not envy your position because now they dug themselves in a pretty big hole.